Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. And in this video, I'm gonna share some music production tips while recreating the beat and do a leap us. Don't start now. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the song itself has a really cool disco type vibe. So we're gonna start with focusing on the drums and the nuances that go into creating that type of groove. So I have a drum rack here in Ableton Live loaded with some sounds. And then I'm gonna go ahead and step sequence. That means I'm gonna go ahead and draw in the beat. So let's just choose this empty clip slot here, double click. That's gonna give us a one bar measure to work with. And let's go ahead and draw in our beat. So just double clicking and have the kick on the one and the three and the snare on the two and four. Let's play that. Pretty basic. But what I'm gonna do is to have some bottom end beef with that snare, we're also gonna go ahead and copy the snare drum pattern with the kick as well. So it'll be a, kick, a four on the floor with the kick. But what we're gonna do is lower the velocity of the kick of the where the snare is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and lower the velocity there. Same thing here. And then what we'll do is go into this kick and make sure that the velocity is right here Velocity, we'll crank that up to maybe about 20 or 30 seconds, 30 percent. And that what that means is, uh, as the, the farther up you crank up that number, the more the velocity will have to uh, play into how loud that sound is played back. Now we'll do the same thing. Let's go ahead and put hi hat pattern in there. Well, we want quarter notes, so we'll just draw that there. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna have the hi-hat, the, the, the first one would be a little stronger, and that second hi-hat, the velocity would be a little bit softer. And you could hear how it's softer in output volume, the lower the velocity is. So we'll lower that down, and we're gonna copy these two and duplicate over and over. And the reason why we're doing this is because having a consistent hi-hat all the way through doesn't really add life to that groove. And as you start to see, that's the whole thing with this pocket is, is just that, being able to create that nice humanistic vibe to it. So I'm gonna copy the snare drum track and layer that with another snare and lengthen this out a little bit more. All right, now let's go ahead and incorporate a loop to sit on top of the drums that we programmed. And this is really gonna help glue the drums and just bring a little bit more life into that and just give a better feel to it. So uh, just digging around some, you know, just some music that I have on my hard drive came across, like I was looking for a disco type of loop um, or a record. And then I've got this uh, Valerie Horton Brown, play this. So I just like the texture of those drums. So that's what I'm gonna be using. And here's the clip here. So we've got that wood block happening at the downbeat of every kick drum. So let's go ahead and take that. We're gonna take that out. We're gonna click this to enable our envelope mode. Our envelope menu shows up. And we're gonna choose the clip and we're gonna choose the clip volume. That's what we're gonna alter. So I'm gonna use my pencil tool by hitting the letter B and we're gonna mute or draw out uh, the volume of that initial kick. And we'll just clear this line out here as well. Let's see what that gives us. And we'll take that extra hit out right there. Now let's see what that sounds like. And this is without it. So it's just there, it adds that nice little nuance to it. And then what I'm gonna do is go into here and instead of trying to, uh, it's the forward backwards where it'll try to play uh, the audio in reverse after the transient marker. I'm just gonna hit it here where it's just playing the transient and then it just uh, plays it as a one shot. I'm gonna lower this down so that uh, there's less decay. And 
And the reason why I'm doing that is so that those pauses and that audio that we just wrote in with our pencil tool is aren't so noticeable. So now we've got these two, let's go ahead, hold shift and group them together and hit command G to combine them into one group track. I like to be organized, so I'll put drums here. And let's go ahead and um, just do some process to, to further glue them together. So uh, let's choose um, the virtual mix rack by Slate. And uh, I'll use uh, a basic startup that I have here. So we're, we're just adding a little bit of punch to, uh, I've got this custom series lift that's gonna add some punch to the, the, the kick here. And a little presence on the top end. And we've got the stretcher um, adding some compression. I'll bypass this. And that tightens up that snare and kick hit a lot. And then we're using the EQ to really take away some of that, um, that high mid. All right, now let's go ahead and focus on the bass line. So for this, I'm gonna use Moto Bass by IK Multimedia. It's one of my favorite plugins to use for this kind of thing. And there's a lot of freedom that we can have to adjust the bass to get the sound that we're looking for. So let's go ahead and put the riff down first, but at this tempo, that riff might be a little crazy. So oftentimes what I like to do is just actually slow the tempo down and nail the riff and that way I can get the right pocket for it. So we're at 123 BPMs. I'm literally just gonna go down, let's try uh, 107 or 106 BPMs. Let's choose a clip slot and let's go ahead and track the bass. All right, let's check that out. So let me just highlight everything with Command A and then Command U to quantize it. Now let's speed this back up to 123. I actually like that pocket too, it's pretty good. Okay, now let's adjust the actual tone and the type of bass. So we have a, a couple of selections of uh, different types of bass that we can choose from. And uh, I'm just gonna go through these till I find the one that, that feels you know close enough to the reference. How about we try... Let's try the Thunder Bass. This is cool, is it? Because it's, it's got like this threat. So I'm going to move the position of where the finger is playing. We can go into the play style and we can put some muting on there. A little bit more detail, uh, attach noise, and the strings. Let's put um, let's put some old strings on there. And then uh, let's bring the tone down on the circuit, and we'll go to the amp and maybe bring this down a little bit. It's great. Um, let's go ahead and um, since we're on it, we'll use another virtual slate mix rack here. And I'll use, let's do a little bit of EQing. I'll use that Neve EQ here. And some compression just to time this up a little bit. You can 
hear how the those those notes that jump out they're now a little bit sandwiched in and it's just a more a controlled dynamic performance here all right so now let's focus on the pre-chorus section so we start off with putting down some pianos so for this i'm using the addictive keys uh, modern upright patch We have just a clap going on just to keep time there and what we're going to do now is uh, create a midi track and just duplicate by holding the option key drag that down we're going to copy the same uh, same chords and uh, let's go ahead and use in this case we're going to use a a plugin let's use serum because we're going to do these pads that are going to mirror that same chord progression here so So let's just solo these over. And then what we'll do is just crank up the unison here so we have some detuning to play with. And raise the release. So envelope one, let's raise the release. And just bring the attack up a little. Now, one thing that I notice is for the, the keys that are being layered, there is uh, another harmonic tone introduced. So right here in bar three. So we'll extend that out. So we'll take it from here. And then, and then this one which the piano doesn't do. So this has, it's a really cool thing that's going on here. Big shout out to Ian Kirkpatrick for, for just these small little details that go into his production. Really, really cool. So these pads have that extra harmonic layer on the second half while the piano is still playing the regular chords. Let's listen to this with the piano together. All right, so we'll duplicate this, and now we're gonna go ahead and grab a filter, put that right on top of the serum that we just created. Right click on the filter frequency to show the automation. And we'll start off with having it um, just filtered out a little bit in the beginning. so bright at the end there and there you go uh, let's go ahead and add another serum or any two oscillator synth here for that matter but uh, since we're using this we'll stick to that and this is now going to create the bass that's playing there it's a, lot, it's a different bass than what we hear in the verses and so what's really cool is you keep in mind you hear the contrast here when we get to this section open piano synth very airy we've got that nice melodic line that duo is singing but everything's changed. The bass is not the same bass that we hear in the verses. Um, so these elements don't come into this section. It's what gives a nice breathing room and the contrast. And that's what's really important when you're writing these types of pop songs is that you need this tension building contrast that, uh, you know, that, that, that differ from other parts. That, and so really what you're trying to do is take your listener, the listener on the song, through a journey. Peaks and valleys and have some contrast in there and that it helps it go a long way. All right, so for this bass line, let's, uh, let's go ahead and have two oscillators here, but we're slightly going to detune oscillator two. So they're both sawtooths and we're gonna finally just tune this so you get this nice little Hoover Reese type. And then we'll go ahead and filter A and B. So let's go an octave lower and put our bass line down. So let me put the metronome on and let's track that. So we'll go with the second half here and just duplicate that and make sure everything's in time. All 
Now let's go ahead and put, um, let's put that tambourine that comes in halfway. It's got a tambourine here. And we'll just drop that in right there. It comes halfway there. And lower that in. And the pads are really, really bright. So let's just keep them filtered out a little bit more. And then we have um, this really cool little vocal thing that, that we got going on there. So I'm just going to record myself doing a little vocal stab and then load that sample into a sampler. So I just went ahead and recorded audio. I just tracked myself using the microphone. Uh, uh. Just put some of that down. And then what we'll do is create a MIDI track and click and drag and drop that to that MIDI track. And now what we can do is trigger this right here using our MIDI controller and unsolo that. Let's go ahead and put an echo delay right inserted into that and uh, lower the dry and wet. And the timing here is going to be really important. So we'll put it at 16th notes. We'll leave it at three here. And we want to go from stereo to ping pong. So we have that bouncing action going on. And then we'll add some reverb to the post. So that's after the affected processing. All right, now let's go ahead and put that in. So we'll just take these two here and duplicate that and select them and hit Command J to just merge them into one thing. And I'll hit the loop. Um, now what I'm going to do is group that sample by hitting Command G so that I can duplicate that and layer it with an octave higher sample. And what I'm doing is I'm basically creating an instrument rack and creating layers so that I can have this sample here that we recorded. And if I duplicate it, now we have another instance of that. And so we're going to go to the second one. I'll just put plus 12 so I know which one's it. I'm going to go to this here and we're going to go a whole octave higher. So there you go, that's going to layer the two of them together. All right, now let's add that sustained string that we hear going on in that section as well. So I'm going to use contact for this. Just drag and drop that into our project. And we'll use the stock libraries. So we'll go to VSL string under orchestra. And let's just choose string ensemble. And drag and drop that. And we'll leave it exactly the way it is. Let's go a couple of octaves higher. And we're just going to sustain that B uh, throughout that whole thing. So just need to hold that note there. And I can stretch this out and just hit the legato button. And then I'll drag that all the way across. And just lower this down. Well, I hope this video was helpful and inspiring in any way. And as my gift to you for watching this video, I love to hook you up with some sounds that you can use in your projects. I've put together a sample pack and filled it up with construction kits, loops, one shots, transition effects, and these are 100% royalty free. So that means that you can use them in your projects and share that music with the rest of the world. It works in any DAW, just simply click, drag and drop, and you're ready to go. And it's 100% free. Just click the link below in the description box to download this sample pack. Or you can visit www.beatacademy.com pack and download this sample pack today. 
Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.